being able to build a fire, uh, and perhaps even more importantly, being able to start a fire. Now, what are our choices? Our choices are matches, cigarette lighters, and nowadays, some form of metal match. All right? Let's start with matches. There are all kinds of matches out there. The problem being, they are very quickly blown out. A little puff of wind comes along, and you start to strike another match. Uh, I don't like that. There are waterproof matches. To waterproof a match, they coat the head with a, a shellac type material, which makes it very difficult to light because when you go to strike the match, you've got to wear through that shellac, the lacquer on the outside. It's like nail polish. You've got to wear through that to get the chemicals on the match head together with the chemicals in the striking pad. And when you add heat, you have a lit match. But if that chemical is completely covered with lacquer, Boy, you can strike and strike and strike. And where's all that lacquer going? It's going right into the striking pad. And you know what? You end up with half a box of matches and you can't light them anymore because the striking pad is so contaminated. I don't like waterproof matches. I don't like waterproofing matches. What I do like is putting good matches in a waterproof container, all right? And the only matches that are really uh, any good are the matches that are sold by the REI company. Great matches, the best that there are available out there. Cigarette lighters. Some of you perhaps have used or think about using cigarette lighters. Well, let's stop for a moment. What have you got to do to flick your bick? You got to overcome the childproofing. You got to spin that wheel and you got to hold the fuel release down at the same time. It's too much to ask of a cold, hypothermic individual. Flicking your bick is tough to do when your hands are cold and stiff. Don't recommend them. They're also explosive. There have been a couple of fatalities in the United States where people have dropped a Bic lighter in a fire and it's exploded, sending that shrapnel through the air. Be really careful with Bic lighters. They are temperature sensitive, they're pressure sensitive, and they're also affected by altitude. Don't carry Bic lighters. So, matches, so-so. Bic lighters and other kinds of lighters, even the high pressure ones, don't work very well in cold conditions. And then finally, metal match. This is my absolute favorite. This is a metal match. It produces these kinds of sparks. And a metal match of this size right here, you can start at least 500 fires. I know because I've done it. I've counted. 500 fires. This is a man-made metal alloy, all right? It's got cesium and cerium and magnesium and other chemicals in it. And I don't really care what it's made of, as long as when I scrape it with a sharp edge like this, I get those kinds of sparks, all right? So this is half the equation. On the subject of metal matches, I would also recommend that you buy a metal match that has a wooden handle. Because when all else fails, you can actually shave this sh the handle down, like I'm doing right here, and light that shavings with your sparks. It's not great, because a puff of wind comes along, it blows it away. But you can't light plastic and you can't light Adler, but if, when the chips are down, if you've got a wooden handle, you have some chance of actually lighting that. But we can do a whole lot better than that. And better is cotton and Vaseline. Big bag of cotton, and make sure it's cotton, not polyester. And a big jar of Vaseline like this, you've got all the fire starting you could possibly need. Here's how you do it. You take a cotton ball, and you tease that cotton ball out into the biggest, flattest disc that you can. Such so like I'm doing right here. Don't pull it apart. You're just trying to get all the lumpy parts out. All right, something along that line. And then you take a big finger full of Vaseline. That's a little bit too much, but something along that line. And you smear the Vaseline into the cotton until there's no dry cotton left. Just absolutely saturated. People forget that Vaseline is petroleum jelly. Gasoline, all right, in jellied form. And you mix these up ahead of time, before you go on a trip, and you store them in a match case. Now, just pack them in there. You, in a match case this size, you can probably get six or seven cotton balls in there. And then when you want to start a fire, you take a cotton ball out. And this is a real important step right here. When you take that cotton ball out, it's going to be a soggy ball of cotton like that, and difficult to light. You probably won't be able to light that. And people forget this step. The step that you need to remember is you take that cotton ball and you pull it apart into two pieces like that and so that you retain all of these fluffy edges. 
and then you stick this down onto a piece of bark or a piece of leaf. Better still is a cup of aluminum, a bottom of a pop can, something metallic. Because if you use something metallic, when you light this and the Vaseline liquefies, if it's not on something metallic, maybe even a piece of stone, some of the Vaseline is going to leak into the ground and you're not going to get the burn time out of it. But if you use a, even a bottle cap, whereas the Vaseline melts, it collects in your container and it almost doubles the burn time. So there's our fire starter. That in conjunction with your metal match, you've got all the fire starting that you possibly could need. The beauty of this is it's long burning, it's very windproof. Yesterday and the day before out here we had some really high winds and metal, uh, the uh, cotton ball worked just great. It's also very waterproof. Here's a cotton ball I made a few minutes ago. Let's say for the sake of argument you dropped it in a puddle. You say, oh gosh, there goes my ability to start a fire. Well, don't quit. Remember, Vaseline has coated all the fiber. Squeeze the water out. Now because it's wet, you've got to fluff this up a little bit. Get a little bit more air in there. People forget that when it comes to building a campfire, you've got to have three components. Air, a heat source, and something to burn. All right, so open it up a bit more. Get lots of air inside there because I can feel the moisture in this. All right, and then again, set it down. And you're probably going to have to work a little bit harder than you did with that one because of the moisture. But And if it doesn't work the first time, come back in and fluff it up some more, get some air inside there, and there she goes. Yeah. So it works really well even in, in, in wet conditions. So this is my answer to getting a fire started. After you've got this burning, because it's long burning uh, and very windproof, it gives you time now to go ahead and pile up your sticks and build a, a teepee fire or a log cabin fire or whatever method that you find works for you. It works extremely well. I've trained and participated in survival training all over the world. This is how I start my fires, whether it's in the jungles in South America or wherever it happened to be, this process works.